Hit your mic button, mic on. Mic Hey guys, it's a uh, it's eleven fifteen. We're supposed to start. Do we know who else may not be joining us, commissioner wise, for the UDC? Rusty, maybe. I think Rusty was coming. Kamal was supposed to be here. I know Janice will not be here for either this or for planning commission. But I'm going to wait just a minute before we get started, before we call the meeting to order, just to see if anybody else shows up, because I know people are having to sign in and take temperature checks and all that. So. We'll, we'll exercise some patience here. Mic on. on and click it as off if it's on or off bulkhead yep. and
Everyone, we'll let uh, Commissioner Coffey get settled in and then we'll get started. Thanks again for your patience here. This is new to all of us today for the first time, so.
Get on. Here's your mic button, your mic on. Right. Where's the light? Right here on the side. Okay. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you, first of all, for your patience. Um, as you probably know, this is a new council chamber to us as well so we're getting oriented and we appreciate your grace there as we get started for the one person who's watching this at home and live and wondering why we're starting 13 minutes late that is why so with that i'm going to call to order the urban development committee of the planning commission for thursday december 10th 2020. our first order of business is to receive the minutes of the february 27th 2020 urban development committee do i have a motion so moved. moved. Second. I have a motion and a second, and I'm assuming that staff knows who's doing all this and can put it in the computer, and they are. We can now cast our votes. Please cast them. Okay, the minutes are received. We've done something. Excellent. Our next order of business is why we're here today. It's a discussion and recommendation on a proposed ordinance uh, relating to amendments to the zoning and planning code. Just simply put, it involves uh, urban conservation overlay districts. Uh, I believe someone from staff is here to present on this item for us. Katie, is that you? Excellent. I'm the principal planner for current planning and urban design in the planning department. And uh, I'm gonna zip through this presentation to kind of refresh on this ordinance. Most of you have seen it once or more than once before, um, and then hopefully have a little bit of time for discussion. Uh, we are representing this because it was uh, last presented about two years ago. Renewed interest from uh, members of city council has prompted us to bring this back to you for further consideration. As revitalization and infill development has increased in some of Oklahoma City's established core neighborhoods, we have heard requests for an enhanced level of design review that would ensure compatibility while still allowing flexibility and revitalization. Initially, we developed a new overlay called the traditional neighborhood overlay. As we were working on this, we also evaluated an existing tool, which is the urban conservation district overlay. Uh, each of these urban conservation districts has unique guidelines and they're very difficult for staff to administer. Uh, we have not created new urban conservation districts in many years because of that, but we realized that this was, had a similar purpose and intent to what we were working toward with the traditional neighborhood overlay. Ultimately, we decided to approach this by incorporating the concept of that first traditional neighborhood overlay into an amendment to the existing urban conservation district ordinance. This retains all of the provisions of the UCD for existing urban conservation districts. Their requirements and regulations and guidelines do not change 
but would allow new neighborhoods to come in under the new guidelines adopted. Uh, new neighborhoods requesting the UCD overlay would be required to go through a design review process and obtain a certificate of approval only for work that requires a building permit. Work can largely be approved by planning department staff with a process for review by the Urban Design Commission, one of our design review bodies for certain items. The amendment to the UCD overlay establishes one set of design guidelines that apply across the board to all districts. The guidelines use the surrounding context of neighborhood uh, characteristics uh, as a reference point within the guidelines to provide for compatibility established by the neighborhood character. Uh, again, these guidelines and the design review process would only apply to new uh, urban conservation districts as those are adopted. So a neighborhood would become an urban conservation district uh, by rezoning into the overlay, just like they would go through any other type of rezoning process. Uh, it could be initiated by city council, by planning commission, by the urban design commission, or at the request of the neighborhood with a showing of at least 50% support of property owners within the defined boundary. Uh, it would then come to the urban design commission and planning commission for a recommendation and on to city council for final approval, just like any other rezoning that you all see um, all the time. So, so at this point, uh, we've done years uh, actually of outreach and development on this tool and have presented it to numerous, um, at numerous public meetings. Uh, we are presenting to you all today and intend to go to the Urban Design Commission for presentation next week and then back through all of those bodies for recommendations and ultimately approval if we um, are able to proceed. So I'm going to quickly go through what the ordinance covers. Um, the amendment retains the basic uh, layout of the Urban Conservation District Ordinance, adding in a section for design guidelines and a design review process, and clarifying the provisions that remain in place for the existing Urban Conservation Districts. The ordinance uh, clarifies the purpose and intent of the districts as facilitating growth and revitalization while providing oversight for major projects that could impact a district's physical character. The tool is an overlay, a zoning overlay district, meaning it applies in addition to any base zoning requirements. The overlay district would not regulate use. Changes to base zoning requirements would still go through the regular process for things like variances or spuds and puds. The overlay requires a certificate of approval only for exterior work that requires a building permit. These are major projects like additions, demolition, new construction. Approval can be granted by planning department staff in the majority of cases or for some things by the Urban Design Commission. The ordinance establishes guidelines for different categories of work. Guidelines for changes to existing buildings address major changes like additions, structural changes like alteration to porches and roof forms. Guidelines address new construction, emphasizing the compatibility of massing and proportions with the surrounding block and area. They encourage compatible design without replicating or mimicking existing buildings. New construction guidelines also establish principles for design of buildings for which there are no comparable reference points in a district, such as adding a multifamily or a commercial property in a district where there aren't no, are none of those property types. The guidelines emphasize compatibility in things like building orientation, placement of doors and windows, proportion, and scale. And these are some rather exaggerated examples of the kinds of things that would likely not be within the range of compatibility that the guidelines are striving for when you look at the orientation of the building, the size and proportions of the building. Uh, things like setbacks, massing, size and scale, again, are important characteristics for compatibility within a district. The ordinance also includes criteria for review of demolition. This criteria is virtually identical to that in our other design review districts that was updated just a few years ago. The last section of the ordinance lays out the retention of the existing process, um, provisions and regulations for all previously existing urban conservation districts. And that takes us to um, where we are now and our next steps. Um, that includes outreach to stakeholders, neighborhoods that have expressed interest along the way and that participated in the development of this tool, um, coming back to Planning Commission, Urban Design Commission, and then on to City Council. Um, if everything moved 
according to that schedule, we'd be looking at an adoption and effective date uh, later this spring, early summer. So I know that was really quick, um, but I think everyone has seen this numerous times before and hopefully you remember a little bit of what we've talked about in the past. So happy to answer uh, any questions. Katie, thank you so much for the presentation. We do appreciate you keeping it quick. Um, we did study this as a session, as your staff report indicates, uh, in 2018 in December. So we have heard this before. I don't recall who all from this group was in attendance at that meeting, but uh, I do remember it. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Katie at this point? I would like to just speak briefly on this topic, if I can, today. Sure, go right ahead. Um, well, I guess my first question, actually, sorry, I do have a question, okay. <laughs> is um, what wards do we expect to be most affected by this, or the potential neighborhoods in, in which wards might, you know, adopt this overlay? So I think it's most likely similar to where we have other design districts um, and where we have established older neighborhoods that have a really well-developed physical form, so two, six, seven, most likely, I mean, possibly Ward 4 as well. Um, but those are the areas where we've heard from people along the way and where we have the types of neighborhoods that this type of a tool is typically applied to. Um, well, I guess my, my purpose in asking that is I, I just want to acknowledge that, you know, Janice isn't here today and she's probably going to disagree with most of what I have to say. Um, and, you know, I really struggle with this and Katie knows, you know, we've talked a lot about uh, just these kinds of protections and like we're, it, it's tough for me to to kind of rectify what I understand is in our comprehensive plan document uh, in terms of adding densification and what to me tends to be a stumbling block for that densification, which are these types of neighborhood protections. Acknowledging like the oldest neighborhoods in the city are always going to be closest to the core because cities develop from a center point out. Um, the trouble with that again though is that, you know, the places where cities most, you know, appropriately should add density are also closest to that core. And to me, where I really struggle and, and where I want to acknowledge uh, the, the letter that we got from uh, uh, Mr. Zitzow from Johnson & Associates, um, I think they put it very well uh, in, in several different instances, the same troubles that I have, which is that we're kind of talking out both sides of our mouth, where we say we, we want to really you know, focus this density in the areas that are appropriate. We've got people, you know, coming that, that, that I think rightly in more rural areas struggle with this, uh, you know, the added densification. And it's like, well, as a city, right? I mean, those rural areas probably more deserve to stay rural than the core of the city to stay single family, say. Um, it's hard for me, it's just this kind of, these kinds of added protections I know tend to at least in practice that I've seen, only go one direction. Um, there, I, I, you know, I, I don't know that I have anything more eloquent to add to that. It's just I don't know how we can continue to add these types of protections, but also execute our comp plan, um, the, the spirit of that comp plan, especially like you know in, in wards such as mine. So, uh, Commissioner Smith, I. I, I agree with what you said, and, and you may be surprised. I won't speak for Commissioner Powers. But I will tell you she called to express her concern over this going forward since she wasn't going to be here today. She did not think that this should go forward. Um, and she wanted to, which I think is right, when we met in 18, we had the discussion of saying, hey, look, wh why are we taking this through if there's a comprehensive development code coming? Let's do it as a part of that. And my, my thought there really, just in sort of giving feedback to staff about this, is I agree with everything that Asa said. There, we, we sit here, I've become a convert of this idea that infill development is in the best interest of the city long term. And promoting that infill development requires some discomfort. We have people come in here all the time that are upset because the quadplex is being built next to their single family home. And in order to get that quadplex in the dirt and make it economically viable, they have to bend things a little bit. Adding additional regulations that, with all due respect to design boards, that they're going to parcel through and decide what is and is and should and shouldn't be done is not palatable for me as a commissioner. There is no way I would support an application to add an architectural or design review component to what's coming through. 
there are things about the neighborhood character and compatibility like setbacks, right? Height and massing, things like that that can objectively be reviewed quickly could be codified as a part of a larger ordinance uh, and easily implemented that developers and others could quickly understand, implement in their projects so they know when they come forward it could be administrative. But having the Urban Design Commission review these things and letting neighborhoods add in, all that's gonna do is reverse the infill promotion we've set here and approved in these neighborhoods throughout the city, in my opinion, in a, in a, in a large way. And that's contrary to what's in the best interest, I think, of the city long term. I say I think because I don't know that, but I've become a believer in that from being on this commission for a while, listening to city staff preach that, uh, listening to public works and others promote that, not just planners, right? Uh, and and, and it's, it seems to make sense to me. This would reverse that. And I think Mr. Zitzow's letter, which I also read, uh, Mark, uh, articulates that well. We don't need to articulate that here uh, any better than he certainly did. But uh, I think I'm in agreement with you. Does anybody feel differently on these points? I think this is what matters. Should this go forward on its own as a standalone basis, right? And does anybody disagree that it would reverse the promotion of the infill development we've sat here and supported as a commission for the past couple of years? And I think, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think was, uh, this is when Janice being here would be helpful, was the policy even before I served on the commission, which has been over two years ago. Is that, anybody disagree with that? So I struggled with whether we should even set it for introduction. I think, I feel, as I thought about that, I feel like, Maybe we're overstepping our, maybe, maybe we would be overstepping our boundaries a little bit. My understanding is that a city council person or persons has requested that this come to them. And if that's true, let's set it for introduction. I'm not gonna support it. Um, so my, my vote will not be supportive of anything that includes an architectural review component. If it's an objective set of development criteria, I'll, I'll retract my, my lack of support, but I'm not gonna support it, but I still think it's appropriate for us to set it for introduction. Do you want to comment for just a moment, Jeff? Yeah, if I might. Um, yeah, it was a just it, it was a, a council request that it come forward, and that's why you know and we and Mark's uh, Mark's letter was was good. It really kind of incorporated, um, and Mark and I had a conversation earlier. A lot of the pros and well cons that that we discussed with with the council members of you know why we decided to, well, we should just wait and, and, and put this in the code update. Um, but the, what, what their perspective was is that they, they keep hearing from people in these neighborhoods that want some protections. And so, um, you know, we said, hey, you know, we, 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 could, we could have this ordinance, you know, it's available, we could go ahead and do it. it. It would only be in place for a limited amount of time before it becomes superseded by the, develop, by the new development code. Uh, they felt like it was still worthwhile to try and, and move forward to give people that uh, that tool. So, yeah, um, those those same points that Mark made in the letter were good and were uh, were discussed kind of a, in a, a pros and cons type discussion environment uh, before this was brought forward. Uh, so there's that. And then uh, just to real quickly address the issue of uh, kind of uh, being a a dampener on density, um, and maybe Katie can speak to this a little bit with regards to the detail of the ordinance. But the way the way it was intended to work is to actually accommodate density. the The, the issue that we have, and why we think a, a nuanced approach is worth discussing, is that if you you know some of these neighborhoods just um, if they don't have some level of of what they perceive as protection. Um, they're, they tend to be more reactive, you know. If there's no design guidelines that are saying, you know, it, it's okay, we can, we can add density in this neighborhood and it will still fit in, it'll still look appropriate, it'll still, you know, you're not gonna have this, you know, some of those kind of not so good looking images. This won't happen because we've got some guidelines that prevent it. So, in other words, it, it allows us to, to densify in a sensitive way. That, that's kind of the goal um, of the more nuanced approach, and and granted, you know, it's it's uh, you know it was developed a few years ago, and it's it's just using our current paradigm with our our design uh, uh, review board. Um, you know, it may something that we may bring forward in a couple years with the code update would 
would look a lot different, uh, I, I would presume, and it would supersede this. But um, that, that's what we intend to do with the code update is to provide, you know, we, we know that there are neighborhoods in the urban core that um, where, where, you know, we see this on a week-in, week-out basis where there are um, uh, these concerns about we, we want a stable neighborhood, we want to retain our character, but on the other hand, we've got Plan OKC, which says, well, we need to add density. Well, we can do that, we feel, we can add density and still retain character, and that's, that's kind of the goal. Whether you agree that this, this could do that or not, that's the intent of both this and uh, the code update, you know, when we when we do get to that point. So I think that Katie, did you have anything well, else you wanted to add or I guess I guess for me and, and, and I feel like this was somewhat uh, Scott's comment It's can we codify that in objective criteria? Versus it going to a, a design review board because to me That's where a lot of that subjectivity gets put into the process and suddenly people are denying densification based on you know, more subjective reasons. And I just, it, it's that risk that adds the cost to construction. And we are increasing the price in these neighborhoods where, you know, now we're, I think traditionally we've always had people come in and, and cry foul that we're gonna lower their property values. We're starting to get the first arguments that we're gonna raise property values now. And the question is more like less about, you know, to, to, to me, those types of things is more about how do we, how do we legitimately like stop adding costs to construction, stop adding costs to, to, to rentals, to you know, uh, purchase prices of homes that, that just are unnecessary burden for our citizens? Um, all that said, I recognize this has been in development since 2015 and I do want to apologize to everybody that's been involved. I hate to be the guy that was in the door late that's now gonna you know, put my foot on this, but unfortunately, you know, I'm the one that's got to either support or deny it, and it's, I'm with Scott. I just, I don't know how I can support this uh, if it comes through. Um, it, it's that rule of is. unintended consequences. Yeah. You're trying to solve a problem of people complaining. The facts are, the truth really is, they're not giving you their honest reason why they're complaining. That's the truth. I sat on the Board of Adjustment for a number of years. I listened to these things come through. The case I remember the most vividly was, and I, and I hate to call it out specifically, I won't say his name, but the applicant had a house that he was wanting to develop in the cottage district, which when the cottage district ordinances were written, it was like, come one, come all, build something, build anything. We just need economic development, please. Anybody, somebody. So they started doing that. And then it became this battle over what is the aesthetic? What is the character? Should they be big? Should they be small? Should they be brick? Should they, who cares? The development and developers, the community and development, people are going to put product in the ground that works. And if you put a board who's gonna architecturally render what is and isn't tasteful in a neighborhood, you're gonna clip that. The, those design boards are not best at making those decisions. If there's product in the ground like what you saw on your screen, it's not gonna sell, right? It's not. And, and that's, the, in, in, in and of itself, that's gonna prevent this, this feared proliferation, but that's not the real fear. They don't want the density and they're using this as a mechanism to prevent it. And that flies in the face of everything that we said we've stood for and promoted. And if you don't agree with that, that's fine. But we've had an awful lot of people come stand at this podium and, and complain about it, and we've looked at them right in the face and said, this is the policy that we have, the policy of our city, and we're gonna to continue to promote it. So, anybody else have thoughts or comments? Well, where are we? If there's nobody who wants to say anything, let's, let's I mean, take a motion here. I, I, I would, it's my view, tell me if anybody feels differently. It, it really, we should set it for introduction. Uh, if city council is asking to see it, we're a, you know, sort of a link in this process. We can set it for introduction and that way it's coming back to us. I think we've had a chance today to discuss kind of where we stand and time to reflect before we come back and we're actually voting. So the only motion we're making today is to set it for introduction on January the 14th of 2021. So. If anybody's comfortable making that motion now, feel free to do it. If not, say your comment. Is there anyone else here that would like to comment on this matter? Mark, we've sort of spoken for you a little bit. Do you have anything else you want to add? All right. Anybody else? Go right ahead. 
who the people were that could oh let go can you hear me um, the second or third slide in it listed the people who could activate this and we were one of them and the but the neighbors 50 percent of a neighborhood is this only on the property that they touch or can they just I mean like the, the church that we had a couple of years ago can a neighborhood that doesn't own that property try to declare this as being secret I'm so um a, a neighborhood or a group of property owners could initiate the process to request the rezoning if they have a majority of the property owners within whatever boundary they define. If they say we want it to be our whole neighborhood and that neighborhood includes the, this church over here, or if they say we want it to only be this half of our neighborhood, they would define the boundary themselves for what they think the district ought to be, and then they would provide documentation of the owner support. That's only to initiate consideration of the process. Ultimately, you all review it and provide a recommendation on whether or not you think that area or that neighborhood is an appropriate location for the district. And you could say, we think this neighborhood is appropriate, but it shouldn't include these buildings over here. Um, and then that goes on to city council to ultimately adopt. So yes, a, a, an area could initiate a request for an, uh, a boundary that includes properties where the owners are not in support, but ultimately that would be your recommendation and then council's decision to say whether or not that was the appropriate application of the overlay. But I, I, I think it's a very astute question, is, right? Because yeah. that's exactly how it will be used. And how is that legal? I mean, well, uh, if you want it, buy it. If you want to control what goes on there, buy it. I mean, I remember standing here talking to Brian, the guy who used to, for the Thunder, and I said, Brian, if you want that church to not be something you don't want it to be, then you go buy that property. And that was not in their wheelhouse. So, I, I mean, that's my not necessarily a question statement. We don't need to make this to where some unsuspecting victim who happens to... That, um, that piece of the ordinance is written consistent with some of our other zoning district ordinances, and that's certainly something that could be modified. Um, that percentage there, it's based on some language in state statute, and it's based on language that we've used in other overlay districts for a property, a group of property owners to apply, but um, it's not something that is set in stone. So that is something that would be negotiable. Anybody else have questions? Mr. Zitzow, you wanna come up, come up and uh... Go ahead and give us your address for the record just for grins. And Mark Zitzow, Winnie Sheridan Avenue with Johnson & Associates. Uh, obviously, that portion of it is one of the larger concerns. Um, I was wondering if we could just quickly go back to the slide that showed the timeline. Um, <clears throat> when, I, when I'm looking at this, I, I think maybe there was misunderstanding on, on our part. It appeared that there was going to be more outreach and discussion prior to it going to a vote to the planning commission in January, and then ultimately headed to city council potentially six weeks later. Um, so I, this timeline doesn't seem to match up with a motion to put this on planning commission for a vote, but maybe there's misunderstanding on my part. If, if, if we set it for introduction today, uh, Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong here. We'd set up for introduction at the um, January 14th meeting. Uh, we would, we're not at that point sending it on to city council, right? We, we'd do that twice, in other words. Is that correct? So by, that's why I'm saying setting, not setting it for introduction, I think. It feels to me like we're overstepping our boundaries a little bit. If, if council has said, get these wheels in motion, we can get the wheels in motion. You, I've already told you how I'm voting on it. So um, that's but, understandable. The, the calendar that was presented was that it would be introduced in the spring. Yeah. And I think that gave more time potentially for our firm or anyone else to work with staff if this is going to move forward to potentially massage and amend some of the regulations set forth, like the percentage of neighborhood, like setbacks, should things be should or shall. Th this belongs in the development code update. I mean, we, I think there seems Agreed. to be a consensus here that that is appropriate. It was the consensus in 2018. So, so thank you. Um, I did realize we, 
we have it in your staff report to introduce um, January 14th, but that actually needs to be January 28th because of changes to the Urban Design Commission schedule and their review of it. So that is one. Um, if you make a motion to introduce it, that does need to be the 28th and not the 14th. Thank Sorry you, Katie. So At this point, well, this, oh, uh, go right ahead, Mr. Chair. Sure. To Mr. Zitzow's point, I mean, that slide says March. But why is it where, I mean, that doesn't start till late March. Spring starts late March. So why are we introducing it in January if the next step is, is March? Well, so again, just to add specifics to what I said, let, let, let's just kind of walk through it. So if we introduce it at the January 28th meeting, uh, then it comes, then it's what? And the next meeting, we would actually vote on it. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, Katie, did you, I just want to clarify, did, was there something that you had in mind to be happening between now and the introduction on that, that slide? Or? No, honestly, it's a slide that's been in there a long time and we've used kind of broad seasonal terms because we haven't, you know, wanted to, as soon as we pin down a date that we think it's going to go, that date ends up being wrong. So we just used very broad terminology and I'm sorry that it said spring and that was unclear. Um, it would go, I think it would come back to Planning Commission two meetings later after introduction. because For adoption. To, right. And, th and then that's when it would go to council six weeks after that, which would put it into March. Well, but No, it would be more like late February or early March. It still wouldn't be spring. So to Mr. Zitzow's point, I mean, they have things they hope to accomplish up until spring. So regardless when the slide was put there, if they as a very thoughtful interest in the process were expecting this to be March, April, May, June. I mean, spring is from March to June. If they needed time between now and introduction, I don't know why we would rush an introduction in January if they were hoping the introduction would be in March to June. Yeah, it, I have no objection to setting the introduction date later if that's where you're headed. I mean, to his point, I mean, otherwise, if, if he, I didn't see the rush. If this is as important as you guys who understand it more than I do, if it is that important and he said their firm appreciated more time, Introduction in March um, is what sounds reasonable to me based on his comments. Other thoughts? We do. We this is our prerogative here, so yeah. we can set it for introduction. At I don't the disagree with that. Second meeting in February, we could set it for introduction at the first meeting in March. Uh, somebody tell me what they're. What, what's if we set it for March? Is the city council going to come down here and beat us up? Or well, there's not. I mean, there's not much they can do about it. Right. Okay. Um, well, I'll make a motion. Okay. Jeff, do you have comments here? Well, I just was going to ask Katie, the, the schedule that we, we forwarded to, the proposed schedule that was sent to, uh, to the city manager's office and presumably to, I'm not sure if it's made its way to council yet, but uh, did we have a specific date on there for the introduction? We had it for January 28th introduction and then coming back two meetings later for a recommendation and then three meetings, three city council meetings. Okay, so apology, the, the, there was an error on the slide, but you know, I guess it was staff's intent to move it forward in, in the January. But if you all feel that, you know, it would be best to, to wait, um, that was kind of the city's internal, you know, deliberation, that would be January 28th. And, um, but you know, that, you know, there are concerns and if you feel like we should wait, then that's, you know, that's, that's your best judgment. Yeah, and so let me be clear. If there was nobody, you know, against it January, fine. I go, okay, then the slide, uh, notwithstanding the slide, fine, go January. But um, it was really just because if they feel like they need uh, the months of January and February to work through shall versus may, whatever, you know, if, if there is a reason to wait until March, then let's wait. If there's not, I'm not doing it just because of the slide. I'm doing it because it was a comment that they prefer more time. Yeah. And if I could add just a clarifying point, if there is no opportunity, if, if we have missed the, the boat because this started in 2016, that there are no room for amendments at this point and the, the conversation around uh, stakeholder engagement has been closed, then there's, there'd be no reason to move it to a March hearing because we would not have the opportunity to make any amendments to it. So I think that's the point. If we have the opportunity to continue to work with Katie, and with Mr. Butler, then we would gladly do so if this is going to move forward. So, well, that look, that's why I made the point this was called for by, you know, a uh, council person or persons, um, which is, I think, why we're here today, just being candid about why we're here today. So, if that's true, 
we, we can set it for introduction later, but I think that's what really drove this meeting. Well, so to Mark's question, is there time for stakeholder engagement in the months of December, January, and February, or is it going to be the same if we introduce it in March as if we introduce it now? Is, is there time for that stakeholder engagement or, or a yes. process and time? Uh, yep, absolutely. Yeah. I think there's time for staff to work with with Mark, with anyone else who's expressed concerns, with anyone on the Planning Commission that has concerns or questions. You know, we, we've worked on this for a very long time. Um, we heard a wide variety of concerns from neighborhoods, both about the type of development you all see where a property comes in and rezones and they feel that they don't have a lot of say in what gets built in their neighborhood, as well as properties that come through that don't need any kind of zoning relief and they can tear a house down and build one back with no review whatsoever. Um, and so we've tried to be responsive to that broad span of concerns while still taking a balanced approach that would still allow for infill development. Um, but obviously we wanna move forward with something that makes as many people as possible happy and that has the most um, chance of success. So we certainly have time between now and March to, to meet and to discuss it. Okay. I, I frankly want to be a little selfishly respectful of our time. It is 12 o'clock. We have to be back here at one to orientate ourselves. I want to give you guys time for lunch. I said we were going to hard stop this meeting at noon. Um, I, I think we're to a consensus, I think. Um, Commissioner LaForge, if you want to, you take crack at a motion, and I, I think we're ready. Yeah, I'd, take a, I'd make a motion to set it for introduction at the first meeting in March. And I apologize. I don't have my meeting schedule with me. Does anybody oh, know that date? I didn't print it. February 25th is the last meeting in February. I know that. So. Yeah, whatever the first meeting in March is. It would be, here, I'll just look at a calendar. My suspicion is that it would be March 11th. Yep, that's what I see. So I'd make a motion to uh, introduce it at the March 11th Planning Commission meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. I hope, again, staff knows who's making these things. I can't see anything. waiting for the motion here. Mr. Chair, I'm having some technical difficulties. I'm getting the spinny on this motion at the moment. All right, you know what? We're gonna do this the old fashioned way. We're gonna voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it's, it passes. We, this will be uh, set for discussion again or set for introduction at the March 11th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Uh, that is the last item on our uh, published agenda for today. So I just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Screen will stay up. Uh, you can stay logged into PrimeGov and it'll all be there when you come back from lunch. You'll have to sign out of this meeting and into your planning commission meeting, and there'll be uh, city staff to help you guys with that. Thank you very much. Yes.